Hi everyone, this is Bogast Reviews, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the DC Multiverse Reaper figure. So before we take a look at Reaper, let's take a look at the accessories that he comes with. So first up, oops, all the pieces came loose here. <laughs> um, he comes with the upper torso of the GCPD Bat Mech or Rookie Builder figure. Let me just put that back when that came off when I grabbed it. <laughs> so there you can see it. Now, let's go ahead and put these pieces together from the Atom. So there, we've got the full torso and head now. Um, I do have the whole build of figure. I'm just, uh, just waiting to review them one by one now. And now, the Reaper, this is actually the first DC Multiverse figure to have this. Um, actually, I think the Flash from the Target 2-pack has this. But, uh, this came out first. So, this is the first DC Multiverse figure to have interchangeable hands. Which is really awesome. Now, honestly, I don't have any idea who this character is. I had to do some research on Wikipedia and Google and stuff. And honestly, I still really don't know much about him. Really aren't, really isn't helpful. From what I've gathered, he's a villain from Batman Year 2, which takes place after, of course, Year 1 comic. But... I just, I just love the design of this character. Um, he's supposed to be a vigilante, kind of like a Punisher-style character. And he fought Batman. So I hope I helped uh, some of you guys that's watching this out, because honestly, I had zero idea who this character was. I just wanted it, of course, for the Builder figure piece, and I think he looks really awesome. So now that we've looked at all of his accessories, let's take a look at the uh, head sculpt. There's really not much of a head sculpt, honestly, but still. So, there's the head sculpt. He's got that awesome skull going on, that silver skull without the bottom jaw. Looks pretty awesome. And he actually has red pupils in there. It's really hard to see. If you have it really far back like that, you can see, but if you're on top of it, it doesn't look like he has any. And the rest of the head is just the, uh, the hood right here for his cape. I think that would have been awesome if he would have came with a removable hood. Like, take the head off, take the head out of the the uh, hood right here and then just put it back on that would have been pretty awesome but it didn't so he has this um the thing that's keeping his cape on is like this uh spiked chest piece which looks pretty awesome now, i do like the paint shading on this figure there's a lot of paint variation on it you can see that it's that bright red and then that dark maroon color which looks really nice and, uh, this isn't held on by anything. I think it should have been glued down, that way it wouldn't move or anything. But, I suppose if you wanted to take the cape off, you could, but you'd have to take the head off first, which which doesn't come off. But, still, looks pretty awesome. Um, another thing I've gathered is all of these spikes on this, uh, character is poison spikes that can be shot out. Um, I think it's what I read. <laughs> which, that's actually pretty awesome. Like, he has these spikes right here on his knee pads that are poisonous, and on his elbows, and right here on this, uh, I guess collar piece, I'm not really sure what this is considered, chest piece, yeah, on his, uh, chest piece. That's actually pretty awesome that they're all poisonous spikes. So on his forearms, he's got, he's actually got a lot of sculpting detail going on, there's lots of little lines and everything running through the suit, which looks pretty awesome. And then, of course, he has his main weapons, this, um, spiked mace with scythes coming out of him. That looks pretty awesome. Um, this is actually a silver color. You can see how it's got that marbling going on, going on, on it, which looks really awesome. But then, the scythe itself is actually kind of like a, a grayish, kind of like a shiny gray. It's not actually silver. I think that would have been awesome if it would have been the same color, which, as far as I can tell, yeah, it's actually... Uh, molded to the same thing. I'm not sure why the color is so different, though. It, it still looks really, really awesome. Like, an enemy that has, uh, these aren't his actual hands. These are weapons that he puts on his hand or something. Um, but that'd be really terrifying to go up against an enemy that has, uh, spiked mace and scythes for hands. Scythes. Scythes. It's kind of a weird word when you think about it. Um, and on his torso, he's got some more lines and everything sculpted into the suit right there. Kind of feels like rivets right here. Kind of has a weird texture. But you can see that dry brushing going on. Kind of like that really dark maroon color. Which looks really nice. 
and then he's got these spike tips right here on his knee pad which uh I'm not sure how they're poisonous or if there should have been any color variation on it um, but I think uh, from the images that I googled um, it's pretty accurate and then he also has spikes uh, those poisonous spikes right here on his feet too which looks pretty awesome and his cape is a uh, very very pliable kind of vinyl material or soft plastic I actually think this is vinyl actually but that's really nice doesn't really have, it actually has a little bit of a texture to it, which is pretty nice. So this figure is pretty awesome, even though I had no idea who this character was prior to this figure. Like, um, I never thought I'd get all these figures, like, um, without ordering them, because I never saw them in my area at all. And I ended up buying them all at my local Walmart. And, um, like, like I said, prior to buying this, I had no idea who this figure was. So now let's go over the articulation. He's got a swivel at the head that can move side to side. Uh, that's what I hate about um, some of these multiverse figures, is they don't really have a ball joint, because I tried to um, uh, repair one to where it could look up and down more, and it's actually just like a peg. It's not even a ball joint. It's a peg that goes up into the head. So it's not really even a ball joint. It's basically just a swivel. Um, and there's a little bit of uh, room... Uh, to move it so it can move up and down just a little bit, but for the most part, it's just a swivel. He's got ball jointed shoulders that can move all the way out. He's got a swivel at the bicep, single jointed elbow, a swivel at the wrist. Now, let me switch these out here. With his alternate hands, this is also the first DC Multiverse figure to have a double swivel like Marvel Legends. Swivel side to side and up and down. What, me, these joints are a little stiff. But this is the first multiverse figure at the time that could do this. Excuse me. That could do this. Which I think is really awesome. And this is actually my favorite figure out of the wave. It's it's really awesome. Like, um, I, I of course understand why there couldn't be a uh, double swivel on the wrist for, for his uh, weapon hands. But I, I really like that you actually have the option of moving them both ways. And, um... Some images just leaked online that uh, uh, the Clayface build a figure for Multiverse for next year. And they definitely look like they have stepped up all the articulation and everything on those. So, uh, definitely look that up. That's pretty awesome. Um, he's got an ab crunch that can move back all the way and down all the way. That's another thing with the Multiverse. They, they usually can't crunch forward at all, and this one can. He's got a swivel at the waist. He's got ball jointed hips that can move out that far. He doesn't have those weird double swivels going on. He actually has ball jointed hips. He can kick forward all the way and back just a little bit. He's got a swivel at the thigh. Now this is my only problem with the whole figure is these knees. He's got a single jointed knee but if you look let me, you can see that joint is very tiny in there that holds the, uh, the single jointed knee on and you can't move it at all. Just because it's so tiny and brittle that, honestly, it feels so loose right now. I'm I'm lucky it hasn't broken b before this. Uh, so, you really can't move the knees. You can just move them just a little bit. I mean, you could try and, and force them, but that'd probably break them. Like, that's, that's the most that I can get the knee to bend. And I don't want to pressure it because, of course, I don't want to break it. So, that's my only issue. Um... Uh, with with a lot of this, the figures in this wave, I've actually figured out that most of them have those brittle, kind of weird knees. And that's really my only complaint with this whole wave of figures, is the knees are actually the only drawback. Like this figure, the articulation, this is probably, that I have so far, the best articulated multiverse figure. And the only issue I have with it is that weird knee joint. And then he has a swivel at the ankle. It really can't move much, which really doesn't bother me. I don't really think I'm going to get him into too many crazy poses. But it can just swivel back and forth just a little bit. Or up and down, not really back and forth. So now let's do some size comparisons. Um, I have a million Batman figures, but oddly enough, I don't have the, um, the 70s Batman. Because this is, uh, this is supposed to be like, uh, or the way the Batman looks is the uh, Neil Adams Batman, that kind of a design. And uh, I don't have that. I swore that I did, but the, I thought I'd go ahead and show it next to some of my other multiverse Batman figures. 
here is Batman Zero Year. I suppose Zero Year and Year Two could go together. Hmm. I don't really know. And then here he is next to the Frank Miller Batman. Which still, I, I think this, uh, from what I've seen, this figure is supposed to be a lot taller than Batman. Or he, he's supposed to be tall and thin, kind of. So, I'm not really sure if that's accurate or not. Since I really don't have the proper Batman to display him with. And another thing is, the only way this figure is standing up is the cape. He can't stand up on his own at all. He'll just do that. So, well, I had him standing at the beginning of this review. And right now, I have him just balanced on his cape. So, overall, I think this is the best multiverse in my collection, multiverse figure in my collection so far. So, I would highly recommend it. So, that's my review. And if you like this review, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.